Walt Disney World Resort is suffering significant problems as the parks continue to reach capacity, but not as many people are going as perhaps once did. So how can that be? Well, it turns out there is less and less fun to be had. There's more and more money that is demanded to go in, and folks out there feel nickel and dimed every time they cross those turnstiles. Today, we begin a series, folks, explaining how to fix the Disney parks, beginning with Animal Kingdom. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Pro Channel. It is a joy, as always, to have you here for a very meaningful conversation. The Walt Disney World Resort is the biggest vacation destination in the world. Not only that, but you might consider it America's playground. It's the place you spend money to go to the park, but not just any park, not Central Park, not a national park, not even your local park, but perhaps the most beautiful of all parks. That's ideally what the Disney company wants you to believe and wants you to experience when you go there, but the experience has changed. And today we're going to try to fix things to present a positive vision for the future. As we get into this video, folks, please note that we would like to turn this into a series and tell all of you out there what we would do to fix each of the Disney parks at the Walt Disney World Resort. But to do that, we need viewership, we need interest levels, and so you can help us out. If you like content like this where we're casting a positive vision, click the like button, share, subscribe, and perhaps the most important thing, keep watching. Joining us today, Vash Sky of That Park Place and Culture Casino of the Culture Casino YouTube channel. Welcome, gentlemen. Great well, to be here. Well, thank you so much. Happy to be here. There you go. All right. Wrong park. Wrong park, Vash Sky. All right. Oh, here we, go. Sorry. <laughs> we needed a lion's roar. All right. We're talking today about Animal Kingdom. It is uh, Walt Disney World Resort's biggest theme park. It is part zoo, part theme park. And uh, it's a great place to go, at least uh, it has always been for me. A lot of walking involved. Um, but this is one of the parks that needs a lot of help. And I don't say that as someone who dislikes the park. I say that as someone who knows that this is one of the lowest attended parks at the Walt Disney World Resort. And we would like to fix that. And that is, in fact, in spite of having Pandora, the world of Avatar, uh, which I think is one of the absolute best, maybe the best immersive lands that Disney has ever created. So gentlemen, let me set the ground rules for what we want to do here because we want to land in realism, right? We could do this thing where we all spitball roller coaster tycoon ideas, but that's not realistic. We want to cast what's likely and could be done and give a positive vision for the Walt Disney Company so that when they do stuff, we can say, this is what we said you should do. And if they don't do it, well, it's on them. So here's the three criteria we're looking for here. Number one, we know that Disney is a company and that they're looking to make money. So whatever ideas we have, these ideas must bring back a return to shareholders. Two, we also know that the Walt Disney Company is looking to spend as little as possible. So we are also going to do the same thing in our ideas. We are going to look for the highest rate of return, okay? So ROI, we want to give the most back for the least investment possible. And then finally, we are going to attempt to raise guest satisfaction because that I think is the most dangerous thing facing the theme parks right now is that there's so little to do and so much money being taken away from people that I think guest satisfaction is at an all time low. That is my assessment of the situation. But uh, I wanna hand it over first to Culture Casino. Sir, what are some of your ideas for how one might fix Animal Kingdom? Well, this is a massive area. It's the, one of the largest land masses you'll find on the Disney World property. It's 540 acres. It's huge. Um, they have a lot of open space and a lot of undeveloped space. They also have the ability to reposition some bodies of water that would add additional space. So as you can see here, there's a lot of land, a lot of buildable land, which there there is short supply of in Disney World, or I should say easily buildable land because it's difficult to drive pilings down to the limestone base. Uh, my natural inclination is to finish what you started with Pandora, give us the third attraction that wasn't built, which would have been an up and back roller coaster that really should have been done at the same time. It would have added e e even more theming. It would have prevented a lot of uh, sightline breaks and a lot of other things that you worry about when you build 
uh, when you build out theme parks. It would have also given Let's you talk some, about where that goes, culture. You're talking about taking parts of the parking lot behind Rainforest Cafe. Uh, this would also use this tree line next next to the restrooms and between Navi River Journey. Is that correct? This is that's, where that would go. That's yeah. That's one of the that's one of the uh, that's one of the proposed locations. The other was one was on the other side of it. But they, I don't think they can re relocate the water body that's there okay. because it, it's part of a canal system. So but you want to go to the left of the canteen? Yeah, then. yeah, it would have been on the other side of the canteen, no. right? But then they would have had to push out a lot of support buildings and a power plant that they can't easily move. But that's a whole other conversation. But that that the, we'll put that plan out there. We'll go out towards cast parking. Much better way to to close off an area, reduce sightline problems. Then, if you move to the other side of the park, which would be by uh, the east side. Um, you, you have all this space behind Expedition Everest. This is where we were going to get Beastly Kingdom. Now we're, you're Why? talking about, you're talking about East of Africa, right? Yeah, well, actually, even or are back, you talking about East of Expedition the, Everest? Yes, right behind Expedi okay. Expedition Everest, because already you've already destroyed the value of the dinosaur area. I think we can all agree that that's, you know, pretty worthless. And you have all this area that's back here. You have this massive area you can expand, a body of water that you can move. And you have just a ton of wasted space. Now, there are support buildings back there that would have to be relocated, which is why you have to eat into the forest area that's back behind. But it would also give you an opportunity to go 360 degrees around Everest. There is zero reason that this can't be the Matterhorn of Animal Kingdom. And you cannot utilize all that space back there. Look at all well that said. open space. Very well said. Uh, Culture, any other ideas before we switch to Vash on how to fix uh, Disney's well, Animal Kingdom? The, the problem is, is that the proposal right now for Dinosaur Land or Dino Land USA and all that other stuff is that they're talking about Zootopia, which they've built out in China, which is not impressive. Sorry. No, we, we do not want the Chinese. Listen, I am, I am. there's two problems with bringing over the China stuff, okay? And it's the same problem we've got with Tron. Yes. Problem number one is that those items are often developed for people who have not experienced theme parks very, you know, they don't have a tradition of theme parks. And so the attractions are not made for American audiences. Right. And the, the second problem, and this is far bigger, is that it is a PR disaster for Disney to build better versions in America. And that and therefore China has the lesser version of the attraction, even if they, they had it first. And so that prevents Disney from doing upgrades that are necessary that's what that's why we have a tron that lasts all of 50 seconds which is half of rock and roller coaster yeah that is why we have uh a tron that has a show building visible from storybook circus and is a horrible sightline issue because we can't have something better than shanghai so please please we do not want the Zootopia from Shanghai. Well, and you only you only have one significant attraction that's part of that. It's the Hot Pursuit attraction, which is, in my observation, fairly weak. East and Ratatouille. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, look, but but there's so much more that they can do. I still feel like Beastly Kingdom Kingdom was the the route to go. And all you have to do is bring Joe Rody back. That doesn't take much. He's not well, busy. You know, We've got, you know, we, we've got openings now. They just fired the head of Walt Disney Imagineering. All right, folks, uh, don't go anywhere. Yeah. Vash is going to give his thoughts, and I'm going to lay down what I think they need to do to fix Animal Kingdom. And remember, there are people going to Animal Kingdom, right? Attendance is, is there. We don't know what's going to happen after Epic Universe arrives, but I'm here to tell you, when we get, when we get finished with these ideas, we're here to help Disney make money, and we're here to help guests be happy. Those are the two things we're going to do by the end of this video. Vash... What are your ideas for fixing Animal Kingdom, please? Well, I think uh, the, to start, uh, we have to start outside the park, actually. If we can kind of zoom out there just a little bit right here. Uh, Animal Kingdom and Animal Kingdom Lodge, actually, is kind of on an island when it comes to the transportation network of Walt Disney World, right? Uh, and this, this has been a problem. There's no monorails or boat access to any of these locations. It really is only by bus. So can we expand the Skyliner uh, to these distinct locations right here? We've seen how that works with uh, Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios. We can make Disney's Hollywood Studios the new hub uh, for the Skyliner. That you want to see the Skyliner access. from Hollywood Studios? No, we, we talked about uh, trying to not spend too much money. You're spending some big money now, Bash. Well, hang on, hang That's on. There's okay. a reason, though. Help, There's a reason. There's a reason. There. 
Okay, okay. The reason is because Animal Kingdom Lodge, while it is a deluxe hotel, it still is one of the cheaper options, and that's that's simply because it doesn't Ooh. have any additional uh, it doesn't have any additional uh, um, the transportation options available to it. Yeah. If so we you're, can, you're suggesting we can do this, and they can generate tons of money off of Animal Kingdom Lodge by having it connected to transportation. Absolutely, hundred percent. Yep. Well, and if I believe we do that's, that, that, then what, they're going to connect Blizzard Beach as well, right? Y- yes, yes. You can you can provide right, uh, transportation. Lagoon. Right, Sorry, right. Typhoon Lagoon. You're gonna be the you're gonna be the oddball out on this one. <laughs> yeah, Typhoon Lagoon is gonna be oddball out, unfortunately. But Coronado Springs could be uh, could be serviced by this, also to uh, Blizzard Beach and so forth. But you can charge more if it's on a a Skyliner, uh, ho- you know, Skyliner line, uh, as we see with the monorail line. Uh, interesting uh, hotels. So getting getting back to the park, the park really the biggest problem that this park suffers from is no nighttime uh, spectacular. Because of that, there is no demand to necessarily stay in this park past seven. That's why it closes so early while all these other parks uh, close up later. Part of that is because of the animals, obviously. So how can we solve that problem, right? How can we get that second bite of the apple that Disney cra- so craves by getting dinner packages and so forth? We need to fill up. You're, you're exactly right there, pro. We need to fill up this amphitheater right here. It's 5,000 space. I can feel it, I tell you. It's a 5,000 space amphitheater. This thing was built for Rivers of Light. Obviously, Rivers of Light didn't actually uh, do all that well. So what can we incorporate into this? I believe we can incorporate drone technology. We can't do pyrotechnics because the impact and the uh, concussive blasts for the animals, it's not going to work. Um, you could do maybe Rivers of, uh, or, or I'm sorry, a um, World of Color type, type, type thing, but I think drones is the way to go. It's interesting. I was just looking at the no-fly zone for uh, Walt Disney World. Animal Kingdom is just outside of it which makes drones possible i would lean into that for sure we can uh, play that multiple times a night uh 5, 000, uh people a piece if we play that two times that's ten thousand. if we play that three times that is fifteen thousand people that could be serviced by that one addition alone and we can push that nighttime and uh lengthen the hours of operation for this park Expanding on what uh, Culture actually said, I would do the Out and Back Coaster. However, I would actually theme it to the Fire Navi that is oh, in the works right now with yeah. James Cameron. Right, yeah, right, right. Cool. That way we can capitalize better on our uh, biggest franchise right now by far avatar uh you know it demands two billion dollars every single time one of these things is is released right here we can capitalize on the newest and, and greatest of the of the avatar uh, um series with uh, avatar 3 right with this fire navi concept and we can duplicate anything we do here uh to the parks that are looking to do an avatar themed experience uh to uh better uh, maximize on our roi potential yes all right fantastic stuff all right gentlemen as i weigh in on what i would do remember i'm going to try and be as cheap as i possibly can be because disney loves cheap but as i do this I'm going to hand it to you guys to critique what I have come up with for how to fix Animal Kingdom. And remember, fixing it means we want to fill that parking lot and we want people to walk away as happy as possible and Disney's coffers full. So that's what we're aiming for here. So here's what I would do. I agree with you, gentlemen, that we need a third attraction uh, with Pandora. For me, it doesn't matter so much what it is. We know it needs to go on this parking lot. Um, And I would, uh, you know, my suggestion is do a uh, do a hatchery, do the eggs with the with the uh, banshees, and have a giant banshee animatronic that you can walk around. Fine by me, roller coaster, cool with me. But it needs to be something that is down almost never and eats a ton of guests. Okay, not literally. Yeah. Don't don't feed guests to the banshees. I would also. I'm also do... going to recommend. Go ahead, Vash. Oh, yes. Well, I would also include in there a sit down restaurant for Avatar. Um, a a a. a, di- a a unique dining experience similar to what they actually had for uh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. That way we can, uh, you know, have guests serviced by a quick service restaurant that we already have, Satouli's Canteen, and a full-on sit-down restaurant, which might actually take the place of Rainforest Cafe, depending on the attraction size. Oh, that would be... Oh, wait a minute. I Wait, I 100% agree. Replace Rainforest Cafe with something Avatar. Sure. Uh-oh, that way. Oh, Rainforest Cafe and the folks who run it are not going to like you guys. No, no, no. <laughs> they, they, they can still run it. They can still be them. It just ain't going to be Rainforest anymore. Oh, it's going to be, right? I guess it's going to be uh, uh, Navi themed. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, I'm also going to say so there's a bridge over here that some people don't even know about that exists, but it connects uh, Pandora with Africa. And this oh, is yeah. also, although I don't think this is on the map yet, 
Uh, this is also where you Club 33 types get to go. But I'm going to recommend that this space over here in front of the water, that we can actually redirect this road behind the waterway and behind the power plant. Sure. Uh, not too expensive there, but I'm going to recommend that we build a miniature land in between Africa and Pandora. Totally indoors, so this is going to be like a pavilion at Epcot, but it's right. going to be uh, the Antarctic. And I'm going to build that because oh. for the uh, for idea. the folks who are out of Walt Disney Imagineering, um, Florida's hot. In fact, Florida is so hot that before air conditioning, it was inhospitable for six months out of the year. That's why Florida now has a population. There was a time when Georgia had a tremendously higher population than Florida, and that was before air conditioning ex existed. Now, we can also use this service road here to be able to get people from the cent well, get back down there to the central hub. Uh, we can move people across this uh, service road. It, we're going to have to put walls up here with gates so that you can still bring in. Uh, the, the various supplies you need for the restaurants right. and uh, retail spaces. But ultimately we can also get people to this uh, Antarctic pavilion. And I'm also going to put in a, uh, what are we going to call this? An annual pass holder and VIP rest lounge. And this is going to be a common thing that I'm going to say uh, when we do these theme park suggestions. I think that Disney and Disney parks desperately need rest lounges, rejuvenation centers, Rejuvenation stations, I don't care what you call them, but we need places for folks to charge their phones, to sit in massage chairs, to be served nice little sodas and waters with fancy fruits in them. I don't care what it is. And you can charge a huge amount of money for this because it is cold in Florida even during the winter months. So people like to go warm up. And in every other month of the uh, year, it's really, really, really hot, right? It's like Las Vegas with 100% humidity. So in the hottest park in the resort by the way right and you can tie it into uh you can tie it into animal kingdom by having penguins there and uh, perhaps some seals and all of that for people to get to go and enjoy but put in at the very top of this an antarctic themed uh pavilion for people to go enjoy and I that's love, not terribly expensive i love that and it very much is uh reminiscent of what they do at the top of the american experience in epcot and also in the imagination pavilion for Absolutely. different kinds of guests so i love that idea Yep. Absolutely. All right. Next step. Okay. Remember, folks, we are trying to get the, the biggest return on investment we possibly can for the least amount of money. All right. Over here. This is going to be a little bit difficult, uh, tricky to get here, but we're going we're gonna to manage it. Okay. So if you want to uh, ride to Rafiki's Planet Watch, you get on this train that goes along these tracks. But This train is a circuit. Okay. So it runs on this other side too. We're going to eliminate sure. half of this. The train now is only going to go uh, north and south, north and south, and we're going to cut out the, the other side of the uh, tracks. And so just north and south, north and south, which takes you up here to Rafiki's Planet Watch, which is uh, right up here, okay? Um, and the reason we're going to do that is because between Africa and Feathered Friends in Flight, we're going to now introduce, and in what is, I believe, currently a smoking section, we're going to open a new pathway. And uh, we're going to have to be a little careful because we've got to go between the... Uh, uh, Maharaja Jungle Trek, uh, particularly the tiger exhibits, and I'm not I'm not worried about tigers eating people, but I'm worried about sight lines because I care about that even if Disney doesn't. Um, so we're going to need to do some faux mountains or faux rock work to hide that people are back here. But all of this land that is uh, up here, that is uh, north of Kali River Rapids, I want to use that, and I want to use that to the biggest advantage that Disney possibly could. Guys, what's the biggest show on Disney Plus right now? Bluey? <laughs> Bluey. That's right. Okay. Disney doesn't have the rights to Bluey in the theme parks necessarily, but they need to pay whatever it costs to get Bluey. And mm. I'm going to recommend that we put in Australia up here. And oh, I'm going perfect. to recommend, I'm going to recommend, we don't have to have an e-ticket. We, we can just have a walkabout with kangaroos and wallabies, just like we have uh, the, uh, the, the walkthrough with, uh, with Asia. We just need the animals. And we just need to tie this into Bluey and the Healer family and all of that. That's what we need. Um, you can do a, an Outback, you know, experience or whatever. You can have an Australian restaurant. Yeah. You don't have to spend a ton on this, okay? It's not going to be terribly expensive to have kangaroo exhibits and all of that. But That's pretty good. Tie this into Bluey and you are going, listen, you will fill the parking lot nonstop. Do you hate dragons? Is that what it is? Well, and then finally, culture. Here's what I okay. would say. All right. Okay. I, I do not like the idea of bringing in Kanto or any of this other stuff into uh, Animal Kingdom. 
And the reason is because I believe in what you have talked about. I, I like the beastly kingdom and I also like dinosaurs and I like dinosaurs from a financial yeah. perspective because dinosaurs are always going to be popular with little always, boys. And, always. and little girls too, but dinosaurs will, th that will never go out of style. And so what sure. I would say is that they need to reinvigorate dino land. Um, and we don't have to redo dinosaur. We don't have to put Indiana Jones in here. We don't have to do any of that. Um, Put in some put in some nice spinners, okay? Not crappy uh, faux Americana stuff, but theme it to like a, a boneyard or whatever, and really have some fun with it. But don't spend a ton of money. That's okay with me. I like what you guys said about the the nighttime show. I think drones are great. It's not going to cost a, a huge amount of money to do something like that. Right. Um, but those are the steps that I would take. Uh, they are, you know, there's there's some capex expenditures here. But one of the things you need to do is, if you want to fill that parking lot, you need to have capacity. And people yeah. need to have things to do. So we're talking about adding, we, we all agree about adding one new ride to Pandora. Yeah, I think we all agree about having something like an Antarctica over here on something. the west side. Yeah. Um, and we're, where we're disagreeing a little bit is, some of us want the Beastly Kingdom uh, northeast of Expedition yeah. Everest. I'm yeah. suggesting Australia uh, north. Of, uh, of of Asia essentially, and kind of snuck in in the center, top above uh, the Tree of Life. We just can't lock in that empty land. That's the problem. Right, right. And, and, and go ahead. And part, part, well, part of the uh, qualification is to improve the guest experience. Right, and right now, unfortunately, what's really becoming particularly bad is uptime, especially with rides like Dinosaur, Indiana Jones. What I would do is I would change out all of those vehicles on both coasts. If you buy them together, you, you, you save a bunch, but have electric actuation instead of hydraulic actuation. Yeah. Kind of like Tokyo's version. That way we improve uptime. Go and, ahead, Gold. No, no, that is 100% the biggest problem, right? Because yeah. of the, the hydraulics in those multi the multi-directional vehicles, right? That's a six-axis uh, positioning uh, gimbal. But right. I, what, what I what I would really enjoy um, this is I, look I'm gonna join your team you know while while Pro is uh, is getting everything back together I'm gonna join your team here and I'm gonna say we need some transportation options I I'm gonna push back on your sky your 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 buckets your sky buckets <laughs> and, and okay. I, I I would invest a whole lot of time and money into into a people mover type of thing because it will serve two or three purposes number one sure. You can service the entire thing and quote it being green by just covering it over with solar panels, right? That's fair. Then, That's fair. Then, then you, what you do between the ride vehicle tracks is you put a giant walkway that can be used for Disney run events and things like oh. that. So it keeps the, those people out of everybody else's way, and yet you still get like you know the the run Disney stuff. Um, but then you also so you're like multi-purposing this because at the time when it's not being used for a runway, you can walk it. So if you mm -hmm. want to walk or jog in your free time along this beautiful cement pad on either side or on or right in the middle, you have the wonderful Disney Wedway People Mover, which I know is owned by somebody else now. But you just get that technology back and run it between the various hotels as you suggested. Yes, there's more capex on that, not that much more. And you get all this wonderful green PR by covering it over and shading it, shading it with solar panels. Now, guys, here, here's the here's the marvelous thing: mm. is that the suggestions that we've made for Animal Kingdom, which is in desperate need, by the way, because again, oh, yeah. guest satisfaction for this park is what you want to redeem, right? There are a lot of people going to Animal Kingdom now who say, outside of Pandora, I mean. Everest has a busted Yeti, and I love the safari, but beyond that, what is there to do, right? So absolutely. what I love about this is that all the ideas we've come up with, I think we can do them for under $2 billion. And when you're talking about, you know, we've heard that Disney wants to spend $30 billion over the next 10 years for their theme parks. Surely Animal Kingdom could get two measly billion out of that 30 billion. So Disney, ball's in your court, right? Gentlemen, any final thoughts on fixing Animal Kingdom? Uh, no, no, no. I think uh, I 
I, I like all the ideas suggested so far. Also, too, to, to add a little bit more flavor to this. Uh, I love some of those Star Wars Galaxy's Edge ideas that didn't come to pass. Hey, could we do a Bantha ride in, in, in uh, various parts of this, but theme it to either an elephant or uh, some kind you of want creature to try native to Pandora? You want people to be riding I, around on a stegosaurus. Yeah, it could be, could be a dinosaur as well, right? That could be very cool, right? And we've already, we've already invested in that. I think they worked on a year uh, of this with R&D and so forth. So we've already invested. We can just bring that to fruition. It's, boom, boom, boom. There you go. Yeah, also, they, too. They that's built it. Number. They built it in Burbank, dude. It's they, right. They got, oh, right. Dang. And then, hey, maybe, uh, maybe as part of your uh, Australian <laughs> adventure right oh. there, uh, we could do a people mover attraction that might get even more use out of the uh, Kilimanjaro Safari Safari. So we, it's, we it's, need um, those. We need those rides like people mover. They right. have gotten away from, from those kinds of rides. Mm -hmm. They are so needed. It is just unbelievable. And we how have the most scenic park ever. We yeah. need twenty minute ride. Put the boats back in the in the water. Get people on the boats. Get kinetic energy back into these parks. Get people doing stuff that's mundane. It doesn't have to be an e ticket every time. There's nothing to do because you always have to build a stinking e ticket that's down thirty percent of the time. Yeah, and and again, it comes down to the technology that's being utilized that they don't quite understand when they implement it. It's that's a whole other conversation, but the kinetic value of something that moves around the borders of the park that's the heart and soul of the park. Most people don't realize if you have something that faces inward and you get a, a grand circle tour of the area that you're in, it, A, it takes a ton of time. B, it has a ton of people on it. And C, it gives you just this amazing perspective that you can't see in any other way. It's a relaxing ride. And, yeah. and unfortunately, theme parks have forgotten about those. That's right. Well, folks, it's now your turn to armchair Imagineer for us. Drop a comment down below and let us know what you would do to fix Animal Kingdom. And maybe you might even disagree and say it doesn't need fixing. It's perfect just as is. We disagree, but we're always friendly disagreeers. Also, folks, if you have not yet done so, click like, share, subscribe, and click it. Stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Share this sucker out on your favorite social media platforms. And never stop asking Disney or any other company that you support to do more. Don't listen to those who say, oh, you can't be negative. Oh, you can't point out flaws. You will never get anything better if you are always satisfied with the lesser options they would love to provide you because you're just happy anyway. All right, make sure you check out Vash Sky over on That Park Place, the YouTube channel, and Culture Casino on the Culture Casino channel. Folks, all they know how to do is pure, unfiltered, absolute, excellence every day wherever you are and whatever you're doing keep learning keep growing and keep having fun oh what are you doing well you see i wanted to get some inside scoops on disney and their uh different corporations if you know what i mean so I figured, by looking to this fistbowl and sucking it randomly with my own energy that I pay for, uh, uh, you pay for, I could do the whole experience where you can be a master and spy on your targets. You're an idiot. If you want to get the inside scoop on Disney or even other media organizations, you should check out thatparkplace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel. That'd be way easier, more accurate. And, uh, let's do Are you saying I won't get accurate information this way? No. No, you can't. Yeah. Who'd have thunk? 